Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fifth episode of this exclusive series where we will be getting to know the people behind Sitecore a little bit better. In this episode, I will be sitting down with Andrew Owen from the Knowledge and Learning team. Welcome, Andrew. Hi, it's great to be here. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. So, Andrew, if you wouldn't mind, please introduce yourself to the community and tell us a little bit about your story. Sure. Well, as you said, my name is Andrew Owen. Um, and you wouldn't tell it from my accent, but uh, I was born and raised in Wales. Um, after that, I, I went to London to study journalism, and I spent about seven years working in print and radio, mostly as a staff news reporter. After that, I spent about five years traveling around the world, and to fund myself, I did a lot of office temping jobs, but I also did a few stints working on sailing ships. Um, after that, I retrained as a technical writer, and I did that for almost 15 years, um, I wrote software documentation for users, system administrators, developers, uh, and I was working in sectors such as consumer electronics, data analysis, education, retail, and security. Um, during that time, I uh, completed a master's degree in informatics, which is basically computer science for people uh, who had a first degree uh, in an arts subject. Um, of course, mine was journalism. And what is your current role at Sitecore, and how did you get started? Right, so I'm a developer advocate, um, and I'm new to the role, but obviously I have a lot of um, background in, in technical things from being a technical writer for so long. Um, I'm part of the knowledge and learning team, which I think you mentioned. Um, before joining, um, I was a principal technical writer working uh, primarily on API documentation, and Box Ever uh, approached me to ask if I'd be interested in applying for the role. Um, this was during the acquisition period with Sitecore, and Boxever was now Sitecore CDP, um, but it was it was kind of just about coming up to completion. Um, and I hadn't previously considered developer advocacy, but I saw that it would give me an opportunity to use a wider range of skills than I was using a, a, as a purely technical writer. Um, and then by the time I joined, the, the, the acquisition had completed, but the organizational change was already happening. So um, instead of just writing about cycle cdp uh, um and and serving that audience i now cover the in the entire um set of of cycle products and services so it's been a lot to take on um and i've just you know since then i've been spending my time really getting up to speed with with all of the offerings and how they integrate together um and particularly now that we we have this um you know complete solution uh for the, the composable solution um for digital experiences so it's uh it's a really interesting time to be at cycle yeah it is for sure um and now i'm sure your day-to-day -day is is very different but what does a day in the life look like for you um well i mean the, there's really no such thing as an average day for me at the moment um and, and one of the things um, because knowledge and learning is, is developing as an organization um, and we're, we're hoping to uh, take on more people so um, I'm, I'm providing some cover for some of the things that we don't currently have people to do which is outside of my core responsibilities um, so I'm probably doing more of that than I am of, of developer advocacy at the moment um, the, the bits of my day that are the same I suppose it's the general routine that everybody has so and in my case, uh, obviously school's out at the moment, so things are a bit different. But normally, um, my day starts with me getting my son ready for school, get, it, get him breakfast, get him dressed, make him a packed lunch. Um, if he's not at school, I make sure he, he gets to the childminder. Um, so I'm not trying to uh, parent from work, uh, which I've done a lot of in the last year, and that's not easy. Um, and then um, most of the rest of the day, I suppose, uh, I'll be I'll be talking to colleagues in meetings i'll be um trying out uh, various pieces of code um and um i i will basically i have a fairly similar routine for food every day just to so i'm not thinking about it so i'll have muesli for breakfast salad for lunch and fish for dinner on the weekdays because that's all pretty quick to do um i drink a pot of black coffee in the morning um, and then so I don't get too caffeinated, I switch to ginger tea in the afternoon. Um, I, the other thing is that I, about at least once a week, I would say I have uh, late meetings because I'm based in Ireland, but most of my colleagues are based in the US. Um, but I have colleagues all over the world. So I have, I have a meeting at nine o'clock tonight, my time, uh, with uh, some of the other 
uh, folks at Cycle who, who have a similar role to mine. Um, and one of them is Rob, who I'm not sure if you've interviewed already, but he's, he's in Australia. So it's, it's always tricky to find a time that works for people when, uh, when you, we have them across all of the time zones. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's a lot of coordinating there that has to be done. And what advice do you have for someone who is interested in becoming a developer advocate? Well, I would say that the really great thing for people who are interested in the field of developer relations is that the, the DevRel community is so diverse, inclusive, and supportive. There, there are people out there who are happy to give their time to help you get started. Um, and while it helps if you can code, you certainly you don't have to be a developer. I mean, I came in from a writing background. Um, so, you know, if, if it's something that appeals to you, I would say go for it. Um, communication skills are important, but you can learn those. Uh, and I think the most important quality that you need is the desire to help people. Yeah, definitely. And a little bit here, just to get you to get to know you a little bit better. Um, what are some of your hobbies and how did you get into them? Well, I mean, there are so many, so I'll, I'll try and keep it short. But uh, I'm, I'm a writer first and foremost. I've sort of I've, I've done that professionally um, for most of my career. Um, but now that it's not the main part of my job, I've, I've gone back to keeping a daily journal, which I used to do when I was sailing. And then sailing started as a hobby. I, I first went to sea when I was 24. Um, and then I did it professionally for a while in between being a, a journalist and a technical writer. Um, and that's something that I'm hoping to do more of when the pandemic's over. There's not so many opportunities at the moment, but um, li living on an island, there's, there's plenty of coastline. So hopefully I get back into that. Um, and, the, and the other thing that I'm really looking forward to doing again is, is going back to the, uh, the Irish traditional music nights at my local pub uh, on a Thursday and playing guitar with a vast number of people, which is just a, it's a really it's a really good session. Um, and then other than that, um, I, I cook um, and I've been sort of trying to get better at that uh, over the pandemic just because I'm cooking so much that I want to, you know, make it better and improve the variety. What's your favorite meal to prepare? Well, my my signature dish would be my lasagna, which I've been perfecting over years and years. But the the bit I always struggled with was the bechamel sauce. And so when I first moved to Ireland, they've got uh, a really good um, cooking school in Dublin, and I and I went there and, and took a course on the mother sauces. And I'm I'm now well, I can do a decent roux now, so I can I can do all of the yeah, the, the basic sauces and my, my lasagna is much improved for it. You have to send me the recipe. <laughs> Absolutely. So last thing here, if you wouldn't mind sharing your favorite quote with the Sitecore community. Sure. Well, I mean, as a writer, you'll understand I couldn't possibly pick one quote, but there is a quote that um, I keep coming back to that um, I hope other people might find some inspiration from, and it's uh, Seneca. Um, I'm going to have to read it because it's a long one, so <laughs> forgive me. Um, but he said, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. Well, Andrew, thank you for sharing your story with us today and allowing the Sitecore community and myself to get to know you a bit better. It's been a pleasure. On our next episode, we will be getting to know someone else from Sitecore. Until then, cultivate the community.